This is Gemar and Yuma Daf Lamid Vav, the Daf for the first day of Shavuos. All the learning for this month, the month of Sivan, the month of Kabbalah Satayra, has been generously sponsored as a special schos shidduch for Yisrael Chaim and Devayra Mir Tashem. We should hear fabulous news and share in Simchas together in the schos of the entire Chabura's learning. Of course, Ola Chaylem, Yivko Baba Shevin, Aftali Sivan, Yichel Esther, Menu, and Vega Chaim, and Sarsh, Sam Sivan, Yitzhak, Sarah, Baskinendol, Ita Basim, as Chaysa, Yisrael, and Mindel, Yazar, Peretz, Yisrael, Shalmit, Bas Noami. We pick it up in the bottom of Lamid Hey Amid Beis. I'm sure everyone realized the incredible Siat Deshmaya of having an Erev Shavu Isnaf all about the Chiv to learn the complete obligation of Talmud Torah. But now we get back to Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur on Shavu how beautiful says the Mishnah on the bottom of Lamedhe Amid Beis. Ba'loi itzel paroi. So the Kain Gadol comes to his par, to his pole, his bull. Uparo yoyo imi bin ulam the mizbeach. And the bull was situated between the ulam and the mizbeach. We're going to have a bunch of beautiful pictures today depicting exactly where this was, which we'll show in a moment when we get to the Gemara. Roishoi, the head of the bull was Ladarim, is to the south, Upan of Lamairov, and he was facing the west. And the Kain is in the west, east. Upon of Lamairaf, and the kain is facing towards the west. And he rests, as we'll see also today exactly how he does this, but he, or exactly, yeah, he rests his two hands on the animal. And he says, Vido, he confesses. And this is what the kain Gadol says. Of course, it's going to be very familiar, as this is what we say on Yom Kippur during when we say over the Avaida. Hopefully, this year, Mir Hashem, they will be back in the Avaida of the kain Gadol and Beis Hamikdash. What does he say? Ana Hashem, please, Hashem, Avisi, Bashati, Chatasi. Three different types of Averis, three different levels of Averis. As we'll see in the Gemara, we send the Lefanech in front of you, Ani Ubeisi, myself and my household. Ana Hashem, please, Hashem, Kabar Nala Avonis Labsham Chatayim. Forgive me for. Avoyna is Pesham and Chatayim, which obviously are corresponding to Avisi, Pashati, and Chatasi. Again, in the Gemara, we're going to see exactly what level of Avera sins these are. Shavisi, Shabbatati, Shachatasi, Levanecha, Ani Obesi, Kakasa, Betayras, Meshavdecha. Like it says in the Torah, what would everyone answer? Everyone in the entire base of Mikdash would respond in unison. They would bless the Shem's name forever and ever. So we're up to the first bull, the first confession. The Kain Gadol, we have the bull standing to the Mizrach and the Ulam, which we're going to talk about exactly where that was right now as we turn over to Lamed Vavam and Aleph. And as well, we learned the vidu, the confession that the Kain Gadol says. Says the Gemara, Man Sham is laid, Amr bin Ulam al Mizbeach Safin. Who is one that holds that the area between the Ulam and the Mizbeach is called north? The reason why we're saying it's called north is Rashi will be here explains is that the rule is as we learned out in the Gemara Mzvachim is called Kachei Kachim all, all the highest level of Karbana is Kachei Kachim Shechitasa and Basafain their Shechita, their slaughtering has to be in the north so says the Gemara, our mission just taught us that it has to be between the Mizbeach and the Ulam, says the Gemara who is that opinion that holds the Ulam that area between the Mizbeach and the Ulam is called north. Says the Gemara, Rabbi Lazar, Brav Shimin, he. Rabbi Lazar, Brav Shimin. So first, let's just show, get a basic understanding of what's going on. The picture in front of you, you see that is the Mizbeach. Everyone obviously should realize that we spoke out in the live share. The Mizbeach was massive. We're talking 32 Amois. It's about 50 feet by 50 feet, 13, uh, 15 feet tall. Massive, absolutely massive, which maybe we'll get a bit more of a perspective when we see a 3D picture in a moment. Here is the, as you see on the left, the sanctuary the antechamber, the heichal, the ulam, and that is the shaded area that the Baina Mizbeach and the Ulam, that is what we just learned, is where the Shechita is. So the Gemara is asking, who calls that area north? And if you look at the compass in the bottom right-hand corner, you'll start understanding what's going on over here. There's, there's four directions, obviously. So why is that area referred to as Shechita Basafa and Shechita in the north? Let's see. So the Gemara says, it's of Lazar Rav Shimon. Why is it of Lazar Rav Shimon? The Tani learned in Araisa. Ezehu Safain. What is considered... 
north with respect to the Chatzar. Says the Gemara, we have a bunch of opinions. Mikirsha Mizbeach Sfoni, from the wall of the north of the Mizbeach, Va'ad Kaisal Azara, and until the wall of the Azara of the courtyard itself, Ukeneged Kola Mizbeach Kulay Safa Div Rav Yis Rav Yehuda. Opinion number one, that's Rav Yis Rav Yehuda. Again, when we show a picture, we'll really get a beautiful perspective exactly each opinion. Or Lazar Rav Shimon Moisif Avin Ulul Mizbeach, which of course, that sounds very familiar. That's what we just said. That's why we're saying Rav Lazar Rav Shimon is our Mishnah, because he said the same words, Bein Ulul Mizbeach. But let's remember, it was Moisif. He added on to the previous opinion. Rebbe Moisif Avamak of Jesus Rakli Kehanim Avamak of Jesus Rakli Yisrael. Obviously, everyone is expanding it out. Rebbe adds on the area where the Kehanim and the Yisraelim walk. Avo Mena Khalifa is left name for the area referred to as the Khalifais, which was where the Lishka of the knives was kept, and inward are called Maidim Shapasal. So everyone agrees it's possible. Says the Gemara, Lamer of Lazar of Shimini. Should you say that our Mishnah is of Lazar of Shimon, Veloy Rebbe? That's what the Gemara is suggesting right now. So before we continue, let's understand. Here, courtesy of Art Scroll, we see a beautiful picture. And we'll see a 3D picture, courtesy of Kalalashan, in a moment. But here you see there of Lazar of Shimon adds on A, the first area. Rav Yaisi Rav Yehuda adds on the area we'll call opposite the Mizbeach. And Rebbe goes even before the Mizbeach. So basically, if we were walking in to the uh, compound of the Beis HaMikdash, we're in the Azara. So first thing we're going to hit is the uh, the area where the Yisraelim walk. That's where I'm going to have to stop. Then you get to the area where the Kehanim walk. Then you get to the Mizbeach. Then you get to the area between the Mizbeach and the Ulam. Then you get to the doors of the Ulam itself. And each opinion, Rebbe, Rav Yaisi Rav Yehuda, and Loves Rav Shimon, each one is adding on more area as you walk forwards. Over here, this is what the Gemara said that everyone agrees is not. This is called the Chamber of the Nights, Lishka of excuse me, the, uh, the Lishka of the Khalifa, as the, Mishnah, as the Gemara called it, that area on the sides, 15 Amis each, Rashi explains, that area is where they store their knives, and that area, everyone agrees, is not called north. And um, Okay, we'll see that in one moment. Let's just get a few 3D pictures and we'll get a... Here we go. So first of all, here you see, this was the perspective I was referring to. You see that the Kayin is only coming up to not even half of the Mizbeach. All the Kayhanim are there as the Kayin God will rest his hands on the par, starting his Vidoy process. And again, here we're going to see the opinions in a bit more of a 3D. will give us a little more of a perspective. This was opinion number two, Rav Yisrael Rav Yehuda, as you see, that's the middle area. This was Rav Lazar Rav Shimon, which we suggested was the Mishnah, including higher up and this is Rebbe including even the bottom which was Ezzes Kehanim and Ezzes Israel. but everyone agrees that the Bisa Khalifa so side areas is not included so the Gemara now wants to say does everyone agree so Lazar of Shimon and not Rebbe answers the Gemara no Afilu Tema Rebbe we can agree that it even is the opinion of Rebbe why says the Gemara Says the Gemara, Rebbe, what's he adding on? He's adding on not only to Rebbe's Rebbe Shimon, he, I'm sorry, Rebbe's Rebbe Yehuda, he's really adding on also to Rebbe's Rebbe Shimon. If that is true, then the, when we say that the Mishnah is Rebbe's Rebbe Shimon, does it, it actually means, does, uh, I'm sorry, let me say it clearly. When we said, that the Mishnah is Rav Lazar, that means it's not Rebbe. Because if each one is adding on to the other, and we're saying it's Rav Lazar Rav Shimon, that means we're clearly saying it's not Rebbe. So how, the Gemara's question was, Lame Rav Lazar Rav Shimon, Loi Rebbe? And we're saying, no, it's even Rebbe. The Gemara says, it can't be. Because Rebbe's adding on to Rav Rav Yehuda, but he's not adding to Rav Lazar Rav Shimon, meaning he is. And therefore, if it's Rav Lazar Rav Shimon, it's not Rebbe. Again, let's just explain one more time based on uh, the, the simplest picture here, as you see over here, Rebbe is adding on to the last of you, though, who's adding on to the last of Shimon. So we suggest the Mishnah's last of Shimon, that means it's clearly not also Rebbe, because he's adding on further outward. Says the Gemara, no, and I know, this is what I meant. E Rebbe, Nikma Bekula Zara. Ah, if it's Rebbe, then, what should we say? We should say that it's the entire Azara. Elamai. Rather, what are you going to have to say? Rav Lazar Rav Shimini. V'nukva b'mizbeach l'kaisel. It's Rav Lazar Rav Shimini. So why do we say b'mizbeach l'ulam? It should go all the way out to the right wall. Elamai yisach l'meim. We should choshet the kain gadol. Why? Because we don't want the kain gadol to walk very far because he could be weak. The Rabbi Nami, we should choshet the kain gadol. The same answer. Again, let's just explain this. One more time to keep everything nice and simple. 
So first of all, yeah, let's start with here. This is where the bowl, the power was, Bein Ulam, the Mizbeach, you see his head tilted, as we're going to see in the Gemara in one moment. That is the area that the Mishnah suggested. The Gemara wanted to say, again, Tzavlaz Rav Shimon, because that is the area of the Nula Mizbeach. The question was, why not, is that not also Rebbe? Again, I, I, I'm sorry, I keep on saying, let me explain it clearly. Rebbe's adding on. So if A adds on to B and B and then C adds on to B, that means C is also adding on to A. So that means according to Rebbe, are you also allowed to do it in area A? Of course. He's adding on to that. So says the Gemara, it also could be Rebbe. That's not a problem because that area, this area between the Ulum and Zbeya, that little area, Rebbe agrees to. So Gemara said, no, the reason is because according to Rebbe, why are we limiting it to that area? It should be the whole complex. As you see over here, according to Rebbe, it goes all the way out. So the Gemara answered, you know why? Because it's just like according to Vlazbar Rav Shimon, it's not just the area between the Mizbech and the Ulam, you really get all the way out to that wall. Let's go into the 3D picture. According to the Lesbar of Shimon, it's not just this one little area, let's say right by the steps, we'll call it. You really could go all the way to the right. Why do we say specifically there? Because afraid the coin Gadol is going to get weak. Says the Gemara, that's the same thing according to Rebbe. Now, we can move on. Says the Gemara. So again, what's very important is number one is the Shechita is between the Ulam and the Zbeach. Number two is what's the reason the planning of really anyone? Why specifically there? Because we're afraid the Kohen Gadol is going to be weak. It's for Yom Kippur. It's a long Avaita. We don't want him to have to carry the blood very far. Says the Gemara. The head is to the south and his body, I'm sorry, his body is to the south. And his head is, no, his head is to the south and its face, it's one way and then his face is turned the other way. I mean, the whole animal is faced that way. Beautifully, the whole animal is faced towards the Darim and his head is just turned towards Mayri. How is this possible? I'm a rabbi, you just turn the animal's head and everything is simple. Says the Gemara, why are you saying that? Why don't we place the animal? Why don't we just turn the whole animal? Why are we making the animal st- facing Daraim and turning its head? Why don't we just turn the whole animal? Answers the Gemara, a very, very Gishmak answer. The animal might use the bathroom. And if we turn it, what's going to happen? The backside of the animal is facing the base of Megdash. And we don't want that. So we turn the animal in case it uses the bathroom. It is not a desecration to the base of Megdash. Tan Rabbanan, about 10 lines to the bottom, says the Gemara. How does the Kain Gadol do smicha? Says the Gemara. Has ever I made a bit of in the north upon of the Meirav and it's faced to the west. Has ever I made a bit of He's standing in the east upon of the Meirav and he's facing west. When he actually yad val bein shtei karanos shel zevach, he puts his two hands between the two horns. Over the vatch, he's ever chaytes bein noy lebein has ever he could have nothing interposing, nothing separating. His hands would be directly on the animals with his vada, and he says vidu and he confesses. What does he confess? Al chatos on his sins avoyin chatos. All different types of Averis. And included in this is the sin of Leket Shech and Beo, which are the items you have to leave over when you collect a different crap. You have to leave over the corner, you have to leave over the, the leftover bundles, you have to leave over the pieces of stock that fell by themselves. It says the Gemara, Umay Sarani, and he confesses for my Sarani, Divri of Yesi Brav Galili. And the basic theme of all these items are these are all items that are regular lavim, lavim with an oinish, lavim with a punishment, and therefore in all these different Averis, the Kohen Gadol is saying Vidoy for. Rav Akiva, Aimer, Rav Akiva says no. Says Rav Akiva, Ein Oila Ba, this carbon Oila is only for Ela Ala Say, for a positive commandment, or Va'aloisa Say, Shanitik La Say, or for Aloisa Say, that is Nitik La Say, something that we've discussed many times. The simplest way of understanding it, it's like, do not steal. Do not steal. And then says the Taira, the Heshev is like Zelo, return that which you stole. So it's a lav, it's a Loisa Say, do not. It's an Aveira. But then it's Nitik Lase. The Torah tells you what the Tshuva is. There's no punishment for that. But rather, the Torah says how to remedy and rectify your situation. So says Rav Akiva, that is what an Oila comes for. What is this Machlaik? It says the Gemara. But Michael Mifki, what is this Machlaik? Rav Akiva and Reza Glili. Amr Rav Yirmiya turning over to La Mevav HaMebeis. Belav de Nevela Kamifki. They're having a fundamental Machlaik as with regard to the Lav by Nevela. Because by Nevela, 
What goes on over there is, is that there is, the, basically the question is, is there malchus for our nevela, as we're going to see right now. Rav Kiva Savar, lav ma'al yuhu, it's a full-fledged lav, it's a regular avera. Rav Yezi Haglili Savar, lav lav ma'al yuhu, it is not, there will not be malchus. Let's take one moment to see a Rashi to explain, actually see two Rashis, let Rashi explain exactly what's going on here. So the top Rashi explains, lav ma'al yuhu, what does it say by avela? I say, acharav, it says, don't eat nevela. Then it says, give it to a ger. So is this a case of a nitik la say That it says, give it over. With the way to rectify it at some level, it sounds like give it over to a ger. Not referring to a ger, a convert, rather referring to a ger, to ger teishav, a guy that lives amongst your rift. Mixed. Mixed. Umiu al karcha is a nitik lase. Ah, Barash explains. It's not really nitik lase. It's not really rectifying the situation. Done in sin yasa legeri ev shalacher shavar alois lase shalachila. If you are over, meaning if you ate the nevela, you can't then give it to a guy. So it's not rectifying your avera. The avera is to eat nevela. Then it says they give it to a guy. Give it to a guy does not rectify the avera that one might have done by eating the nevela. Rather, val karcha says Rashi on the last line of the wide lines at the top of the Amud. Val the, what is this iser? Don't eat it. Ella, what should you do with it instead? So now there's a fundamental shayla. What level of lav is this? So Rikiva Savar, La Malyu, it's a regular lav, says Rikiva. It's a regular lav. You get Malkus. And it's the exact same thing as like it shechad peyah, as Rashi explains. Nami is an say is the same thing. You have to leave over these items for the ani, and the Torah continues and it says, "For like a kseir chaloi salakit el ani taz venu, for loy salak tenu laki aleha." And you get malchus vein oila ba alof. So according to the first opinion of Akiva, the carbon oila does not work for this. The reason is because it's a regular laugh. Whereas if you say, I really suffer, no, and I'm sorry, there's also going to be Malchus. That's the first opinion of Rabbi Kiva. What does Rabbi Yisai really say? Absolutely not. Lav the Nevela. Says Rav it's true. The giving it to the guy does not rectify your avera of eating love. However, of eating the veil, I'm sorry. However, says Rav Yaisi, because the Tyra wrote it after the Isser, do not eat the veil. Rather, give it to a guy. It's true. You can't have the two existing simultaneously. Again, let's get to the parallel. When it came to stealing, one could steal. And then rectify it by returning it. So do not steal, rather return it. So you could do the Avera and then rectify it. La need the glass, say. Over here it's do not eat the Avera, rather give it to a guy. Giving it to a guy does not rectify the Avera of eating the Avera. So says Rav Yaisi, but still, since the Torah wrote it afterwards, since the Torah wrote give it to a guy after the Avera, do not eat it. Therefore, ain't like in a love. There's no Malkus, says Rabbi Yisrael Gilili. the love the Chasima is not like a regular love. Uba a love Ayla, and the Ayla will work for it. But love the like a Shechol Be'anami is the same thing. I feel I'm reading that. Say the Basrei Meikara Umashma. Loy lucky a love. There's going to be no Malkus, and therefore the carbon Ayla will yes work for it. So says the Gemara. Again, we're trying to figure out the King God little saying Vidu. He's confessing on that first carbon. What does he have in mind when he confesses? Does he include? Lavim that have these malchus or not says Rabbi Yisrael Glili a lav and avila has no malchus therefore it is yes included in the carbon ayla and therefore will yes be included in the vidui of the kain gadol whereas Rabbi Kiva argues and Rabbi Kiva says no there is yes malchus and therefore it is not included in this carbon ayla again the basic idea is the carbon ayla works when there is no malchus says the Gemara three lines in the bab Abaye Amar no Abaye argues the kuli amal lav and avila lav Everyone old, it's really not a real love. And therefore, it does not get Malchus. And therefore, it should, yes, be included in the Karbanayla. It's a different Malchus. The Malchus is a separate Malchus with regard to what level of it is. It's not a fundamental Malchus whether every time the Torah writes what to do with the Isser, like by Nevela, whether it's called the real love, that's not their Malchus. Like it's really both Rabbi Kiva and Rabbi Yisrael hold that there is no Malchus. Rather, they're arguing locally with regard to Leket, Shecha, and 
Heyo. Says the Gemara, now the Gemara, Tanu Rabbanon, Kitzan Misvate. And now we have to figure out what was the precise wording, what was the precise order of the Vidoy, as when we learned the Mishnah, we said that there are three words, Avisi, Peshati, Vichatasi, and we'll define what they mean, which is what we're going to do right now. So says the Gemara, Tanu Rabbanon, Kitzan Misvate. We're about seven lines from the top. How do you say the Vidoy, Avisi, Peshati, Vichatasi? The first opinion, which we're going to see in Rameyer, says the order is Avisi, Peshati, Vichatasi. Vichem, Misayar, Mishaleach. The second goat, which they sent to the throne of the cliff, they said the same thing. First vidoy, then go first avaynois them shayim. The whole chatasam, then chatasam. Chaim and Moishu Aimer. This is very important. Moishu Rabbeinu. He's the Makar, Says the Gemara. What did Moishu Rabbeinu say? Noisin avayn ufesh avichata. So the order seemingly goes. Divi Rameir. The first opinion Rameir says. First we talk about avaynois, then shayim, then chatayim. We per. Obviously, did not define what those words mean, which we're going to do right now. That is the opinion of Rem Meir. Come to the Chachamim. Says the Chachamim. First, say the Chachamim. Let's define what these words mean. After we define the words, they're going to have a bomb question on Rem Meir. Says the Chachamim. What do these three types of errors mean? Avainais. You know what an Avain is? Iluaz Dainais. You do not err on purpose. Chenu Aimeri. Karis to Karis and Avesh Ayi. The soul will be cut off. Avainai Ba. That sinned. Pshaim. What's the level of Pshaim? Ilu Hamaridim. So, who rebels not just on purpose he's rebelling he rebelled the Levina rebelled for all their Averis Elu I'm sorry What's a chatos? Ilu ashkagais. That's inadvertent. That's by mistake. Pchenu oimer nefesh kisecha te bishkaga. So we have three levels, says the chacham. Avainais on purpose. Pshaim rebelling. Chataim by mistake. Those are three levels. What did Rameir say? What was the order? Rameir taught us that the order was avainais. Pshaim chataim. So what does it come out? Says the Gemara. Says the Chacham in back to Rameir. Umeyach hashes vadal is dainais. You first said zadain. God, please forgive me for my avirus I did on purpose. V'yalach maradim. God, please forgive me for them when I rebelled. Chayzer misvalu the shkagois. Silcham and then you say please forgive me for I made mistakes. That doesn't make any sense. Says the Chachamim, once we know the translation of these three words, it comes out very strange. You're first asking forgiveness for a purposeful. Then you're asking forgiveness for rebelling. Then you're saying, please forgive me for inadvertent. That doesn't make any sense. Says the Gemara, says the Chacham, they argue on the order of the words. Again, Rameir said the order of the Vidu is nice. Say, Avainu Pesha, like Maish Rabbeinu. Say the Chachamim, Elekacha Yom Isvade, Chatasi, Avisi, Upashati, Lefanecha, Ani, Ubeisi. The Chachamim are now changing it. They're not saying Avoin Pesha and Chataim, but rather says the Chachamim, Chatasi Avisi Pashati. First is coming the Chataim. First is coming that which was done by mistake. Then is coming Avisi, that which was done on purpose. And then is coming Pashati. Then is coming that which was a rebellion. So the Chachamim are changing the order. Again, one more time. The Chachamim are saying, um, Chatasi Avisi Upashati, they're concluding with the rebellion, which of course that makes a lot of sense. First, forgive me for that which I made a mistake. Then forgive me for that which I did on purpose. And then forgive me when I rebelled. Again, the same order. Okay. So we have three Makairis like the Chachamim that it goes in order of severity of sin, first inadvertent, shaykeg, then mazed, and then re- rebelling. But what's the obvious question? What about Moshe Rabbi? You know, that was the Raya for Rameir. No, you say, Avainu Vesha Vechata. Moshe Rabbeinu seemed to have said the order of Rameir. Amar Moshe Rabbeinu. So it says the Chachamim, you know what it means? You read that Pasuk wrong. The Pasuk does not mean Avain Pesha and Chata going in order of three types of Aveirais. Rather, the Pasuk of Moshe Rabbeinu means Amar Moshe Rabbeinu Kaddish Baruch Hu. Rebai Naishal Ha'ilam Bishashi Yisrael Chaitim When they do Aveirais, the Vanecha, Va'aisin Tshuva, and they repent. 
It does refer to three types of Averis. It just means when they do Avera A and B, make it like C. And now it makes a lot of sense why C is the lowest level. So we're asking Hashem to make our regular Averis, the rebellion and the purposeful Averis, like C, like inadvertent Averis. That is the Chachamim. So the Chachamim change the order and they go inadvertent purposeful rebellion. Amar Rav HaShmol, Amar Rav HaLacha, Avad the Kedivri Chachamim. Says the Gemara of course he passed like Chacham, Yachav Rav HaLacha Kiravim. Answers, the Gemara Umao, the Tema, I would have thought, Mistavrat Haimah the Rav Meir. Rav Meir makes a lot of sense. To come and say, Lekra, Meir had a Pasuk, the Moshe. Kamash Mlon, like we passed in like the Chachamim. We'll conclude with one story. Udin Achaz Kamei, the Rav of Avik Rav Meir. There was someone who actually did like Rav Meir. Amar Lei, so Rav asked, Shav Kiz Rabban of Avdiz Rav Meir. Amar Lei, Rav Meir, Svir Lei, Hold like Rameir, because the Chlevs Eva writes in the Moshe, because the Pasha understanding of the Pasuk of Moshe is like Rameir. That's the Machlaik, it's a fundamental Machlaik, is the order of the Vidoy between the Chachamim and the Rameir. And of course, we bask in like the Chachamim, although there are different Nuschayus in the, in the Siddur. We'll pick it up from here tomorrow.